So here's part two for truth tables tutorials. I made this truth table video, what, like four years ago, I guess, and got some questions on it. So I figured I'd make another video to kind of answer some of those questions. I'm actually gonna make another one after this. Um, but for this video, what I wanna do is just sort of clear up some questions that were asked in the first video and kind of show some different ways these questions can be asked. I don't know, kind of make you an expert at truth tables, whereas maybe the first video taught you enough to pass the test. Maybe this one teaches you enough to really, to, to teach other people if you wanted or to get an A on the test or whatever. All right, so without further ado, this was the little table that I created last time, although know that there's two additional columns here that I added on because they're things that weren't included in the first video that I wanna include in the second one. I got the same setup. We have these two premises, P and Q, and P can either be true or false and Q can either be true or false. And that leaves us with these four possibilities, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. And these don't have to be in this order, although this is the standard way things are asked. So unless your teacher is really trying to trick you, you probably see them asked in this order. But it's worth pointing out that your teacher could put TT on the first line and then like FF on the second line and then TF and then FT or something. These don't have to be in this order. And if you shuffle the order of these, it's going to change the order of all these guys. First comment I want to make, not P. Sometimes you see this written differently than how it's written here. So the way I wrote it is with this little squiggly line in front of the P, but it can also be written with the word not in English and then a P. Um, a little bit less common, but can be written that way. You can also write it as negative P or kind of looking like a negative, but with a little kind of down part before it, P. All of those mean not P. And there's more. P with a little C up in the subscript, P complement is another way you can write not P. And the last one, or at least the last one that I know of, is P with the bar up on top. Oh, that's not true. That also means not P, but that's not the last one I know. P with little apostrophe. I've seen all of these written to mean not P. This is the way that the textbook that I was using at the time when I made this video wrote it. So that's what I used in my video. But just in case people are trying to apply this to their own class, you might see not P written in any of these ways. It means the exact same thing. All right, you still come over and look at P and just put the opposite letter that you see under P, same thing. So that same thing works with not Q, right? You could write not Q as Q with a bar up on top of it or Q apostrophe or this weird looking symbol in a Q or Q with a little C for Q complement, all that works. And it's not just the not symbol that can be written in different ways. It turns out all of these can be written in different ways. P or Q, there's different ways you can write that. Um, I think the most common other way this is written, if it's not written just in English with the letter or with the word or in here, uh, is with a little, it kind of looks like a V, Q. This means P or Q. You're supposed to know when you see that symbol, it means or. Oh, okay. Uh, how else can you write this? Well, you can also write it with kind of a more curved symbol in here. It looks more like a U and less like a V. It looks like the union symbol, if you know uh, any of that logical stuff. Uh, this means P or Q as well. And it turns out that P with a little plus in there and then a Q can also mean P or Q. These all mean P or Q, who knew? I think this is a little bit more common, but again, to make this applicable to as many people as possible, I wanna mention that these are different ways you can write that. And similarly, there's different ways you can write P and Q. They're kind of similar to these, except instead of a little V, this thing's turned upside down. So it's P and the little V is upside down, so it looks like that, Q. And then instead of a U, well, it kind of looks like a U, except it's upside down. So it's called the intersection symbol. Well, I should have written P instead of Q. P intersect Q. It means the exact same thing as P and Q. What could you write instead of plus? It turns out multiplication, for reasons that are well beyond the scope of this video, kind of acts like and, whereas addition kind of acts like or in different contexts. So sometimes you'll see it written this way. This is a little bit less common. I say this is the most common. This is probably second most common, third most common, and this is least common. But just so you know, these all mean the same thing. Similarly, if P then Q, there's another way you can write that. There's probably several ways you can write it, but the only other way I've ever seen it written is P and then an arrow and then Q. That's it. This means if P then Q. P implies Q is how you say that. A um, couple new columns that I wanted to add here that weren't in the original video. So I guess first what I have to do is show you how to fill out those columns. And then I can tell you alternate ways that they can be written because just like these conjunct conjunctions that I've already talked about have alternate ways of being written, these have alternate ways of being written. The first one, P, if and only if Q. So it's kind of like this one, there's the if idea in here, but now instead of if P then Q, it's P, if and only if Q. 
What if and only if means is you put a T in here if and only if these two guys are the exact same. These two guys are the exact same, you're injured T. So in this case, they're the exact same, right? The P and the Q are the same symbol. They're both T's in this case, but I don't care what they are. They're the same. So I put a T here. Question is, are these two the same? No, one of them's a T and one of them's a false or an F. So they're not the same, so I put an F over here. If they are the same, you put a T. If they're not the same, you put an F. Here, they're not the same, put an F. Here, they are the same, so you put a T. If and only if, this is called the biconditional, all it's asking you is the two things that are referenced, P and Q in this case, are they the same or not? T if they're the same, F if they're not the same. Um, how else can you write this? I only know one other way to write this. Kind of looks, since it's similar to this, it kind of looks like this. Um, but instead of there being an arrow from P to Q, there's kind of arrows going back and forth. So you got a P and then this two-sided arrow and then a Q. P if and only if Q. It's a new conjunction for these prepositions and you fill it out this way. The last new one that I want to add uh, is P and then X or. This stands for exclusive or. P exclusive or Q or in shorthand P, X or Q. It's kind of like this one because there's an or here, so it makes sense that it's kind of like this one, but it's not the exact same as this one, or I wouldn't bother putting it in a new column. What X or means is kind of like what the word or means in English. Like if you tell your kid, um, you can have ice cream or cake for dessert. That doesn't mean that the kid could have both ice cream and cake. It means you're telling your kid to choose one or the other. That's sort of the idea with exclusive or. What you're doing over here is you're going to put a T in this column, if there's a T in exactly one of these two columns. So note that's a little bit different than P or Q. P or Q, you're just saying, do you have a T in either of these columns? At least one T in these columns? And so up here, I put a true, because yeah, I got a T. Over here on the first row, I'm not gonna put a T. Because X or is asking you the question, is there exactly one T in these two columns? And there's not, right? There's a two T's, so I'm gonna put an F right here. Is there exactly one T in these two columns? Yeah, there's one, it's right here. So I'm gonna put a T. Is there exactly one T in these two columns? Yeah, it's right here, so I'm gonna put a T. Is there exactly one T in these two columns? No, there's not any T's at all, so it's an F. Exclusive OR is a lot like OR if you compare it. There's an F in the fourth row, a T in the third row, a T in the second row, but what's different is that first row. The exclusive or kind of means or like it can mean in English sometimes, where you only get one or the other, right? Cake and ice cream. All right, here my kid is not having either cake or ice cream. He's having both cake and ice cream. Maybe I should let that cake and ice cream thing die. Maybe that's confusing people. X or means is there exactly one? And typically it's written this way with the X or, um, but there's other ways you can write it just like there's other ways you can write or. Uh, the ways that I've seen it written is got that little or symbol again. You're like, wait a minute, that's the exact same as this. How are you going to differentiate the two? Put a little bit of line underneath it. So this means the exclusive or, whereas this just means or. I've never seen the union symbol with a line underneath it, but maybe that exists. Um, I have seen one that's kind of similar to the plus sign. How are you going to distinguish these two? Well, for this plus, you put a little circle around it. Looks like that. <laughs> that's a terrible one. I'm going to try again, make it a little prettier. Maybe I should just call it good and move on. Good enough. If you ever see this symbol or this symbol, it means P, exclusive, or, and Q. So those are some different ways you can write these questions and two additional um, ways you can put P's and Q's together. Uh, one other thing I thought I'd do before I ended this video is these are some examples I gave last time of how you can combine these ideas. All right, we learned P or Q and we learned not P. How do you put those together? Well, I could talk about not P or Q. Well, I can write those in different ways, right? I could say not P, I don't know, this way, sure. And then or, I could write it this way. So just know, since there's a lot of different ways you can write not P, and there's a lot of different ways you can write or, there's a ton of different ways you can write not P or Q. So I just wanted to make that comment. Um, same thing here, if not Q, then not P. How else could you write that? Well, I could say Q 
Complement implies P complement. Right, Q with a little C up in the subscript and P with a little C up in the subscript. We talked about those are different ways you can write not P or not Q. And this little arrow right here is how we say if the first thing, then the second thing. P, if P, then Q was P arrow Q. So if not Q, then not P would be Q complement arrow P complement. So there's a video just on notation, maybe kind of filling in the gaps that I left off in the last video. Sorry about that. Hopefully that's useful for people to make this ap applicable to their class. And what I want to do is make one more video um, where I include a third preposition and talk about how to include those. But I'll do that in the next video.